has really come up it's probably blowing 20 25 miles an hour now so massively uh, powered up on the six so the gong 73 160 liters um, I've got my slingshot 84 underneath which is 2,000 square centimeters I've also got my tiny mask on I've got my 45 centimeter mask on uh, because it's quite shallow here I literally just want to get the position right then I'm going to go in and change up to a 60 because the water's nice and shallow. Um, yes, yeah, so it's, uh, it's pretty windy, so getting up on the foil shouldn't be so much of an issue. So let's uh, let's see how we go. Okay, so uh, 160 litres should be plenty. Yeah, it floats well, nice and stable. One of the reasons I've got it is because my uh, smaller board is quite unstable in chop. So yeah, plenty of uh, plenty of volume. And nice and stable, I can feel like I can move around on the board quite well. There's a puff of wind, foot in the foot strap, stand up and pump. Accelerates well, yeah, it cuts through the water really well, and uh, very quickly the foil's working, and uh, yeah, we're up on foil. Choppy now, as you can see, it's uh, probably a good foot, foot and a half chop. It's very windy, but yeah, the foil works because I've used it before, so it's not an issue, it's just the board. So, if you're using the same foil, it's going to feel the same once you're up, it's just getting it onto foil. And uh, I just found that my smaller board in chop is very tippy, I can't, I can't stay on it very well. So, uh, yeah, it's nice. Good positioning. It's nice to have these uh, sort of graphics on the pads because you can see very quickly where your foot is, make a note of it, and that's where your foot needs to be. So yeah, pretty good. Right, let's go for a jive. Don't get round, hopefully if it's floating enough, I should be able to just uh and low to the water <coughs> here we go we're round can I change my feet oh, yep it's done it not foiling out but it's close enough here we go straight back up again all right so I've uh, come out now on my 70 uh, with my 84 which is 2,000 square centimeters area uh, the gong itself is 160 litres, so nice and floaty, 7 foot 3. Um, because of the design of my foil uh, fuselage, my centre of pressure is about here, so it's, uh, although this is right the way at the back of the track, it's actually as far back as it will go and slightly more, I'm still standing with my front, my back foot about here and my front foot about here, so you know, if I had it here, I'd be standing right up here so it wouldn't work. So, Finding the position of where your feet is is dependent upon the wing that you're on the foil uh, that you're using. Um, so it does help to come out and just try and, you know, not have any foot straps on and just try and figure out where you've got to stand. Um, this board is, is, well, with this foil, it's quite sensitive. Uh, just now had a real bucking bronco moment. 
Back foot's too far back, ever so slightly too far back, about an inch. So the nose wants to lift constantly. So we've got to shuffle forward. That's why I'm constantly breaching. It's about an inch difference. So heel and toe. Whoa. There we go. Um, because my foot was just an inch too far back and I was constantly breaching and, and coming out but I did have a uh, very short mast on so it wasn't um, it wasn't sort of good for coming out in chop but uh, the wind's up it's slightly offshore uh, it's probably coming from about that direction uh, so a little bit gusty I've got my six up I flattened it right off because uh, it is quite windy um, but yeah with the 70 it should be uh, should run nice and smooth so let's give it a go about having the uh, the floatiness of the board is it just gives you confidence that if the uh, the wind drops a little bit or if it's a little bit offshore that you can you can float home um, being on the small board you just, you just felt a little bit sort of vulnerable um, and also you know with the chop I was just finding I couldn't get on the board I was just getting rolled off all the time whereas this actually is, is feeling quite nice uh, it's seven foot three so it's it's 12 centimeters shorter than my um, my Nash that I learnt on but funny enough when I'm up it actually feels a lot shorter mainly because I'm standing so far in the middle of the board I haven't got all that nose in front of me so it, it works really nice so okay let's let's get ourselves on so the wind's very gusty inside you can see it's quite it's a bit light in here so let's give it a go got my harness hook on so basically what I have to do is sort of jump slightly on my side to get myself onto the board because I don't want to damage the rails so I use the, uh, the wing in my left hand to support myself and then I can use the rail of the board with the wing so if I start to tip, if I lean into the wing that stops me sink sinking so once I'm up on my knees, find my position I need to be get the wing at uh, downwind of you and then a very aggressive foot across your head swap hands and then start making your way out it's nice and comfortable the deck it's not domed at all so it's nice and easy uh, to sort of sit on or you kneel on um, it's nice having the full length deck pads as well which uh, obviously my Nash didn't have so it doesn't scuff up my wetsuit so looking for a little bit of wind there is plenty here but I just want to make sure that once I'm up I'm up so it's slightly offshore here so it's a bit gusty so waiting for a bit of a puff and once you get a bit of puff in the wing you can then position yourself on the board and start getting your front foot ready to go forward so I tend to sit, tend to sit myself so that my back leg goes 90 degrees to the board my front leg comes sort of 45 and then when I'm ready bring my front foot into the position you need it so let's get past this boat because it's made the wind disappear really gone there you go Bit of wind so front foot into position a little bit more wind stand up all right so i'm just going to chug up wind a little bit get past this boat make sure my back foot's in the right position if anything it's probably better to slightly have your front your back foot slightly too far forward at first it stops you sort of over foiling and breaching then you can gradually shuffle your foot back Go. And we're up. I say this doesn't feel like a really big board compared to my Nash because I'm standing so much in the middle of the board so I haven't got all that nose in front of me which feels really nice what would be nice is if I had a little uh, a little raised centerpiece on the uh, pad just so I could tell where the center of the board was for my back foot because I feel that my heel is a little bit too close to the windward rail so I'm constantly having to shuffle to figure out where that is right, it's very windy now let's try and use the uh, the wind to go up wind to pick up a little bit of speed just a little bit of heel pressure 
then look where you want to go look upwind that tends to sort of roll your shoulders into where you want to go and then just just try and find that comfortable position that you can hold that I say without the harness it's a real back arm burner with the harness it makes it quite feel quite nice So this is the uh, the Gong 73, um, 7, point, 7 foot 3 long. It's got uh, 160 litres of volume. Uh, overall fittings on it really nice. Really like the deck pads. Really like the full full thickness deck pads. Um, tend to kneel about here. Never quite got with Gong why they had this cut out because on my seven on my 510 flint, my knees tend to go here and they're very slippy. So this cut out seems a bit bit crap. Anyway. There's only one position that you can put the foot straps. That's here and here for the front. So your front foot is going to go here, which, okay, fine, you could do without them. But you've only got two positions that you can put your rear foot straps. So you can put there and there, or there, or there and there. So your foot can either go there, there, or there. Now, I have now figured out that my foot actually needs to go there. That's when I'm sailing, my foot goes there. So it's nowhere near where I needed to be. There's one point where I was going along and I did a jive, came around the corner and I put my foot there and I was just up and down, up and down, up and down, just constantly breaching. And while I was trying to heel and toe back to where I needed to be, I eventually crashed and, and then came off the foil. So this is where, so I can't use a back foot strap because of the positions they've got here either that or i've got to go incredibly wide but then i'd have to move my foil back as well so this is an interesting one i don't use a back foot strap but it would be nice to have the choice if i did on my flint i actually put in a foot strap plug for myself in the right position which obviously i've had to cut that and put it in but that's where my foot went so there you can see by the position of the foot straps front foot strap back foot strap you can see that i'm pretty much in the middle of the board so i'm on, I'm on the floatiest part of the board um, the foil itself is is around about um here so you can see that i'm over the top of the center of the board which means actually um it feels like i'm in the middle so it's very turny anyway if i was right the way back here there would be a lot of swing weight um so it would be a lot slower to turn and it would be a lot less maneuverable so by having it here i'm over the center of the actual board itself you can see here with the uh, the foil attached if I put the foil in the pedestal at the front then you can see here that my mast if you look at the center of the uh, the foil itself which is about here that would put it around about here so with my back foot here my front foot would be back foot front foot way 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 too far forward so, Obviously, a symptom of that would be if I was to stand too far back on the board over here, I'd just be just jumping all the time. I'd be, I'd be the nose would be coming up and I'd be breaching. So I actually got it to the point where it was at the back, and it was actually right at the back, fully at the back here. But it still wasn't good enough, and I actually had to move it even further back. So I had to put the screws into this hole and move it all the way to the rear, like so. So that's actually where it ended up. Okay, so another explanation is if this is where your pedestal is, if you can imagine the mast would normally be through here. So this is where the foil would be in relation to the board. So pedestal's right at the back, foil's here. So if you imagine this sort of balance point of your foil is around about here, just for example, um, that would then mean that my back foot is about here and my front foot is about here. If I wanted to move my feet back further along the board so i wanted to get to maybe that back foot strap i'd have to move this back and as you can see it will not go any further back so what i have to do is move this further back so you can put this into there and that would in fact move everything back 
that far. So then I can move this forward and move it back a bit more and do what I need to do. So that's just because this is a slingshot foil. But it's not necessarily where your pedestal is, it's where your foil is, which it then is where your feet will go in relation to the lift of the foil. This is just a result of where that is. So as you can see, even though I've got it at the back, fully at the back, I probably need for my 99, I need to get that a little bit further back as well. So what you can see here is my position of my feet when I'm foiling. Um, so my front foot is always going to be in that foot strap. Uh, well, if I keep foot straps on, that's where that's going to go. So I can't really change that. So my back foot is the one that floats. And I have now figured out that actually it needs to be just where the yellow and the blue touch. When I try to get foiling, I'm actually slightly further forward by about an inch. And then once I'm actually foiling, I then bring it back. Now, if I put it here, the board is almost completely uncontrollable. As I start to foil, it starts to lift. It's uh, too quick for me to control it. It breaches, and then I end up crashing back down again. So you can see here, if I put my feet where the foot strap should be, it's way, way, way too far back. So the nice thing about this board is by having these arrows, these little markers, is you can look down quickly and see where your feet are, and then you always can just quickly put your foot back to where you think it's gonna be.